Alright, so it's been a whole week of ministry. Did you stream this morning? Okay. So it's been a whole week of ministry. And we appreciate Jesus for the quality of the utterances that came. Like I've been sharing with many across the week. Revelation comes with um, with responsibility. Jesus was speaking to his disciples. He said, unto you it has been given to know. The word there is intercourse. To do business with the mysteries of the kingdom. Unto you it has been given. There are things that God gives to everyone. There are things that he gives to a few. And Jesus, even though his disciples were 12, he was able to make out 12 in thousands. And his communication to them was that unto them it was given. It's the word assigned. It means when God brings you into revelation, it is so that a day of accountability might come. That's what revelation is about. So I know it's been a week of revelation from um, Apostle Victor to um, Dr. David Willie to Pastor Momo to Papa himself, the Apostle Arome, to um, Apostle Gideon Oduma, and then um, those who took charges, um, Bishop John C. W. and every other person who had the privilege to share to whom much is given it means there are two weights of responsibility that come to the person who has been gifted by God one you are liable because he has given to you two you are more liable if more was given to you so it means we are doubly liable because we have received and because more has been given to us. My cry to the Lord is that um, we will understand what heaven is doing and we will align with what heaven is doing. Okay. I needed to abruptly you know, address all the introductions that were going on. I was sharing with Apostle Gabriel this afternoon and I was saying to him, I really don't understand the concept of congratulating someone who was gifted responsibility. We can't be fake now. One of those nights I was not in the meeting, I think it was Friday night. I spent a whole of that time before the Lord. Nobody predicted induction yesterday but I have seen men who have been gifted responsibilities of the Lord who have failed it was in Christ that the office of the, of the prophet was created but now we have fake prophets and we have false prophets it was in Christ that the office the apostle was carried out we had fake prophets uh, fake apostles and we have false apostles. Even though it looks as if the prophetic dimension is the most heat um, when it comes to vocalizing error. The office of the teacher, the office of the evangelist, the office of the pastor were byproducts of the core five dimensions of the ministry of the Christ. But that those gifts have produced falsehood, have produced fake expressions and so what wise men do is not to go about celebrating a victory is to appreciate God for the privilege to be called to stand on his behalf and he's standing on behalf of the Christ and then to begin to labor that at the end that congratulations can come it's too it's too, it's too premature as I try to congratulate someone who gained admission to the university, he may not graduate. 
I've also found out in the last few days that sometimes it would have been better if God did not bring you into an office. Some people's undoings, some people became enemies of the Christ because a gate of responsibility opened to them. And I don't want to run that way. So it was a gift I received of the Lord in tears because I know now that heaven has brought me to a place of stewardship where so much as trust has been committed to me. I cannot feel now. HWCN, there's something I've, I've shared with a couple of you. There's something we are losing fast and I need to address it. We are losing our separateness. We are losing our separateness. Corruption has not hit us full blast. But there is a progression in blending so that what we could do many years ago to be able to say you are from AWC is no longer showing. I would rather get to heaven and find out that I was too hard in consecration. And Jesus, we said, you didn't need to be that hard. You know, if you stayed on this line, you still have been a profitable servant. Than to get to heaven and find find out that I stopped too soon, and I didn't look like him. So I want to plead with you. It's something I've noticed, and I have poured my heart before the Lord. I have tried to look again at my teachings to see if I have taken my foot off the pedal. Because I won't blame the hearers if I don't blame myself. But I feel that there are discussions, there are communications, there are hearings, there are sights that a couple of us are committing ourselves to. Sights, hearings that are suggesting that it's not this hard. And so we're beginning to journey away from the borders and looking like the world, if God does not help us, will be something that will achieve in no time. The church foundationally is the company of those who have been called out. Somebody say called out. Now because we were called out and um, by extension we are also called to journey into God it means that one of the signs of progressions into God is pronounced or increasing separateness it's proof that you're journeying with God because if you are called out and then you begin to journey away after a while the signs of where you came from will no longer bear on you so if you were more consecrated to God your separateness was more pronounced last year than this year it means that your direction of travel is presu- is, is is yes is is in error. Your perception of your direction of travel is in error. It means you're not joining away from. It means you are joining into. And it's something that I have paid attention to in the last four weeks. Have you finalized on the final year thing? Because this year our final year students looked like every other person. There was no way to be able to draw a line. And it's not like they did bad things. But so that we don't fall, for many years we have taken an extreme position. And I think it is safe. I think it is safe. When I begin to unbundle this season, you will understand that it's safe to be so separate in Christ than to be too close and fall back in. Emmanuel, you know that these graduating final year students didn't look like your set in graduation. There are things that are lawful but are not expedient. So every time a people begin to journey from expedient back into lawful, I get scared. I was sharing with 
Okay, we had a long discussion yesterday, myself, my brother Teofilos, and then the point man of um, RCN Akure. And one of the things I spoke of later was my wife wears trousers. And it's not because I'm compromising. I know that in the Bible is not against how she dresses. If not, she won't dress like that. But if you have worn a skirt all your life, the day you first wear trousers, I'm afraid. Oh, the Lord will not have me wear trousers. And then one day you show up in it. Or oh, I'm not just going to go that way. And you show up in it because it could be an idiosyncratic consecration. And so when people cross, I tell them, you're okay, you look good, but what other conviction shifted? Because a switch in outlook may actually be a symptom of a deeper shift in conviction. And so we want to know what else are you going to do, even though you moved from good to good. Are you getting my point? Yes, so that's, that's what I want to start with. So I was sharing with the leaders that I didn't sleep because I saw warfare coming and the car we took from Abuja today did not get me to the airport. It was, was a serious accident. We would have been guilty of murder this morning because a man ran and we, we, we really smashed him. Every That is a life. It's because Jesus showed us mercy. When we ascertained that, okay, it was late, it was blood all over the road, head down, and we got to the hospital, we saw that he was breathing. We didn't believe that he was not going to have one broken bone. We lost a whole windscreen and there's no broken bone. It's warfare. This topic came out during the week because I saw something. Because you saw something. Abby? So if we don't understand what God is doing and we are rejoicing about responsibility, we are wrong. The manifestation of the Spirit is given unto unto every man. Every man. So it means we are publicly liable for the manifestations of the Spirit. But in the day Jesus was going to give, he gave some. It means you'll be more liable. So what we need now is a lot of secret intercession because it's a new toga in the spirit, a new garment, but it's going to attract warfare at that level. And we can't wish it away. We will need to fight it so that we can have peace in the new level. That's how to function. May God give you understanding. All right. If you have your Bibles, you can come with me as we begin the series we wrestle not. Help me, Holy Ghost. We wrestle not. Ephesians chapter 6, from verse 10 to 13. I'm going to teach this subject, God willing, in about eight sermons. And so, um, the media world topic today, we wrestle not, and then you can have a colon. I'll have two parts. I called it true ranking. True ranking. T-R-U-E ranking. It means there's a false ranking. So we want to look critically at the subject of true ranking. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 to 13. Finally, my brethren. This, this sound is not perfect. Is Jerry around? So... Help me perfect it. It has a house sound. Or if this is better, maybe I should switch. Finally, my brethren, this was Paul's last recorded episode, um, segment, which we call chapters of his epistle to the church in Ephesus. I am very... Um, I have a lot of affinity for the epistle to the Ephesian church. And like I was sharing one of, during the week with Uncle Jonathan, I said to him that um, I found out that of all the churches that Paul wrote to, 
when Jesus began to write in Revelations, it was only the church in Ephesus that showed up. Now, if you look at Paul's writing to that church, it was a demonstration of Paul's height in Revelation. And I feel, this is purely a feeling, I feel that because most of his communications to them were gifted in completeness. That church was gifted the capacity to manage the waves that came against it and to emerge in revelations as one of the churches that Jesus will write to. So this is my inference. If what you embody as doctrine is not total, your incomplete embodiment will be a gift of corruption to the enemy. You are safe as you are perfect. Are you with me? If there is an area of doctrine that maybe you don't like it, you I don't just want to hear about this. That you are a master in an aspect does not keep you from falling. You will need to be rounded in your perspective. And that's a call to a lot of labor. That every one of us may need to segment. It's, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Every one of us may need to segment our lives. And then begin into sectors. And then begin to pursue doctrine. That gives accurate instruction in that area. In your social relationships there's an aspect of our christian doctrine that deals with how we relate with each other in your service to god and by extension service to humanity in prayers in fastings and in all the other channels of spiritual engagement in finance in relationships now pro-marital or you're already married you need to labor in business i'm not saying the bible is a business book but you need to focus on the instructions the teachings of scriptures that advance you along that path within the boundaries of the kingdom any area of your life that is not governed by accurate doctrine we give to the enemy a window to penetrate so i'm speaking to one of our brothers um and i said to him he just wanted to know Sir, God has helped you a little. How do I survive? And then I named four things that I feel that a minister, young like me, should put in place. And I said to him, you can be strong. It's like a four-walled system. You can be strong in three. If your fourth layer is low, it means you give the enemy a privilege to climb into. So everyone based on their areas of perceived weakness must stretch both in prayers and in scriptures to manage that area. You are not as strong as your areas of perceived strength. You are strong. You are strong as your weakest link. Are you getting me? Good. I'm just going gradually this evening. So there is a call to labor. The feedbacks I'm getting across board in the body show that Jesus is doing something. And it's good news. But the first thing he's doing is that he's advertising how depraved we are. Because according to Isaiah's, or according to the narrative of Isaiah's encounter, in Isaiah chapter 6, the first thing that happens to you when you behold the Lord is that you come into the consciousness of your depravity. I was reading a document that was written by Charles Pongeon in um, was it 18 30 something let me have my phone let me read something to you. okay this was um, written about 18 Yes, that's about 1874, 1875. 
an evil in the professed camp of the Lord so gross in its impudence that the most short sighted can hardly fail to notice it during the past few years it has developed at an abnormal rate even for evil it has worked like leaven that's yeast until the whole lump ferments the devil has seldom really done a cleverer thing than hinting to the church that part of their mission is to provide entertainment for the people this is 18 what did i say okay entertainment for the people with a view to winning them i'll not read the future but it gave us a picture of the slide from speaking out as the puritans did the church has gradually toned down her testimony then winked at and excused the frivolities of the day then she thoroughly she tolerated them in her borders now she has adopted them under the plea of reaching the masses it's, it's, an, it's a masterpiece defining today let me take the third paragraph um, ok so he says my first contention so there's contentions have been on since that time is that providing amusement for the people is nowhere spoken of in the scriptures as a function of the church nowhere check your bible it's possible to say oh we are a family we want to love on ourselves we want to but it's not part it can be functions of a social group but it's not the functions of the church we were not called to amuse ourselves if it is a christian work why did christ not speak of it it means if there's anything we are doing as a ministry it must be something that christ did or spoke of go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature that's mass 16 15 that is clear enough so it will have been it will have been if he had it and provide amusement for those who don't love the gospel no such words however are to be found it did not seem to occur to him to him good next paragraph then again he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the work of the ministry where do entertainers come in as ministers the holy spirit is silent concerning them were the prophets persecuted because they amused the people or because they refused the concert has no material role it means if you check the list of those who appeared on concerts there was none who died in his name that featured on that list again i'll stop here providing amusement is in direct antagonism to the teaching and the life of christ and all his apostles what was the attitude of the church to the world what did jesus say he has the salt not the sugar candy something the world will spit out and not swallow if i put a spoon of salt and he put it in your mouth what will you do Mutu? you spit it out it means that the gospel is, was not designed to be user friendly ah. short and sharp was the utterance let the bury bury their dead Jesus spoke in awful earnestness. It means he, he came from his heart, but the way he landed on people was, was distasteful. These are some of the documents I've been fellowshipping with. And it's beginning to color my perspective. Now, this document is not as strong as scripture, but I see it as prophetic because he predicted this day. And he was not prophesying, he was trying to bring voice. 
These are church fathers. It was by the knowledge of what was in the beginning that they could judge what was not. Why am I bringing this? Is to validate what I said that most of the, the reactions that you are seeing now, people who used to be complacent are beginning to fight contraband in the body of Christ. It is proof that Jesus has appeared to his church. So much will still be said about the state of the church that some people will rise, and I'm saying this by prophecy, who will come to say, is it that you don't see anything good about the church? Well, there's so much good happening in the church, but a little level has affected all of the dough. That bread that you eat, that was not the size when they poured it. Its new size is the product of a little drop of yeast into it. It is for that same reason that you must follow the first instruction that I gave. Take heed to your lives. Make sure that every aspect of your life sits in scriptures. It's the only way that you'll be safe. I know you think that the warfare ahead of us is only witchcraft. That side can be handled easier than corruption. And maybe I should announce to us as a house. Because God has made us a light by mercy. Every assembly that has been marked out in territories as light will suffer assaults in corruption. It has begun. I won't say more, but it has begun. When I get into a more close circle, there are many things I will share, but it has begun. And for about three to four hours, I cried before God. There was only one cry. Lord, will I survive? If I will not survive, let me not do ministry. If a day will come when men will tell the story of my departure from the truth, don't send me. I know that you know how to keep men. But there are dealings that make men kept. Can you administer a few of them so that I can survive? The mystery is like the mystery of the boiled frog. The temperatures are not adjusted at once. It's gradual. And the people continue to acclimatize. Go wrong now. It's not really wrong. It's not really wrong until we no longer look like Jesus and we become advertisements of the world system. There's a storm coming. Tio was telling us yesterday that there's a storm coming. And that storm will ride on strange wisdom. Strange wisdom. Believers will respond to it by changing ancient landmarks. Gradually. Gradually. Until we have moved all our cornerstones and they are now in Babylon. May you be spared of what is to come. So, we need to press into God to embody personal consecrations. The man who will ascend to the hill of the Lord, the Bible said he swears to his own heart. <laughs> that if, if he decides this is what I will do, even if um, discomfort will come to him, he will stay with what he has said he will do. He will not be cause of discomfort change the rules in a short while we are going to pray but I just want you to give, to give you a picture I know that there is a false textured attack that is supposed to come in our direction but I know if we all rise and begin to pray we can quench that one unfortunately one of the last things corruption takes from a man is prayer. He can allow prayer. That a man is, is, is wicked, is evil, is sinful. But he does not quit the preaching, the teaching, and the prayer ministry. Sometimes the enemy leaves those things. And he gives false reality so that the man cannot repent. These are my new bodies. So let's go gradually through the word of God. And um, 
we trust God that will be helped. Give me back my scripture. Ephesians 6 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong, not in yourselves, but in the Lord and in the power of his might. The strength of the believer, and according to mechanical engineering definitions, the strength of a material is the ability of that material to is 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 it is the word resist or to withstand a force that is gen- that a force that that's the way we say it. Um, I don't think it's the word we stand on using. Let me use the word resist indentation or deformation by the activity of an external force. That Victor, you are straight. And in the day a force comes to indent you. That's to to create a cavity into you. You have the ability to stay no matter how hard that force is. So that there are times when you may not be making progress. Like I've said, one of the definitions of progress in the last days is that you could beat the waves of corruption. Your allegiance to Jesus did not suffer indentation or suffer deformation when forces came against you. And Paul is saying to the Ephesian church and by extension to us that you will need to be strong in the Lord. There is a hub of strength in the Lord. It's not easy to be strong in the Lord because every man wants to be able to testify that he created strength but the ones who will survive we need to look up to God and in him alone will they find strength now when you look to the Lord within that sphere of his expression there is also a facility that he gives to you it means that our strength is designed to be the byproducts of an entity who is the Lord or an office and a structure of spiritual performance which the Bible refers to as the power of his might. The might of God is a power hub. You will need to draw from it permanently or what you call strength will not be strong enough when darkness comes against you. Be strong in the Lord and in the power that comes out of his might his might god's capacity is like a reservoir and when a man begins to behold that reservoir certain valves like taps are unlocked and then power begins to seep into that person there are prayers that turn the valves but they are also postures so that in case bolu you are busy and you cannot you cannot pray to say send me you will need to be postured as the weak because he gave it power to the weak there are entrance statements that you need to make into every day lord i'm willing but i cannot in myself and then the valve is ready a hand begins to work on it it's like an automated system so that every time you come into an hour of need the valve is turned on your behalf even if you lack the power to pray i am not a product of prayer i'm a product of the mercy of god because there were days i could not fulfill the prayer requirements that i needed for survival ah but mercy said no that's why i'm here that's why i'm here those who have better tools have not been gifted my reach in ministry so it's not about better tools it's not about older members i, I was we tra- i traveled with my son and my daughter in the army and when we pastor rasina this morning and ras said hmm, sir have you seen that we are not too old in our spiritual family we don't have as in i mean old old men even our spiritual father is in his 40s 
but we don't look like young men. Certain vows have been occasioned by mercy, and then we do business like ancient men. The second thing that he said that baffled me. He said in our spiritual family, we are not like the regular setting. It's not one strong man and everybody weak. It, God has planted a system that makes men strong. That if you don't see our father, you are still not hopeless. Can you whisper to your neighbor, be strong in the Lord. Some of you have not been able to testify to sustain strength. So that on Monday you survive temptations. On Tuesday you beat corruption. But on Wednesday you became a victim. Be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Next verse. I'm going to 13. Put on the whole armor of God. That ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Watch this. Because you have been seated with Christ. Which gives voice to... The legalities of your redemption. The import of Jesus' sacrifice for you. And your acknowledgement that that sacrifice was about you. Because the guy who is not saved now. Is not seated with the Lord. Even though the price of his sin has been paid. Are you with me? So. It's, it's the import of two things. His sacrifices. In satisfying the demands of the justice system of heaven and your acknowledgement that those sacrifices were about you. If you sustain the reading of the book of Ephesians, then you come into the medium part, which is um, um, the communication of what we can call Christian ethics, the Christian life, how you are designed to live. As a result of your seatedness with Christ. If your life is aided to sustain that progression. Your last phase of expression will be that the one who has benefited from the kingdom must take a stand for the kingdom. Paul was speaking to brethren from verse 10. So about whether the brethren were in the choir or they were in ushering. The communication to be strong in the Lord and the power of his might was to everybody. Even if your job is to sweep the church. Paul is saying if you sustain your work with Jesus, a day will come when you will be recruited to stand for the kingdom. There is an aspect of the defense of the realities of the kingdom and the boundaries of the kingdom that God will not do for men. He saved us among many other reasons for that day of kingdom defense are you getting my point and it's not just the day of the apostles everyone who has been saved has that destiny that you will stand and so like the instruction in verse 10 is to everyone the instruction in verse 11 is to everyone that all of us must put on the whole armor if you wear it partially you'll be a victim The whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil, the devices, the we it's going to be a battle of wisdoms. And every one of us who has been called to stand will be will be attacked by the wiles of the enemy. Can you from the lexicon give me the word wiles? Let's let's look deeper into it. The wiles that's what we have been called to withstand or to stand against. Help me. I've not been able to fully unlock this tab, so I can't put any Bible on it. It's just my notes that can be there. You said? Okay. Trickery? It means it's a wisdom thing. You know the word tricks? I put two sweets in my hands. I say choose one. There's a way I move the hands that 
in your mind you think you are following the pattern so it says here it's here it's here and then when i open it you find out that i operated at a level of wisdom that i knew you could not you see i'll make it simple if i do like this you can focus you follow it but in doing like this things could have exchanged and then you say it's this one and then you find out trickery yes sir. Cunning acts not acts what we have been raised to fight is witchcraft we'll fight that one too that one comes straight but this one comes with an additional word they are corny it means they are embedded or they are laced with wisdom any other word this it so there is a wisdom that we must embody and what Paul did was to communicate the wisdom as instructions that no matter how trickish the enemy is no matter how corny he collides with you are there any other words yes yes that's no matter how deceitful the enemy is if you wear the whole armor of God you'll be victorious verse 12 for will for we wrestle not against flesh and blood because it's a battle of wisdoms the average believer of who comes against the devil with human wisdom we fail so you go to war not just with the mastery of your weapons but having a good mental understanding of what your enemy is even in football which is a natural sport when you want to play a team you send out like spies what they go to do is to watch the matches of the enemy they don't just watch okay how do they play they look at the effect of pairing certain players okay if you have when they used the the four maybe four three three formation how did this player play okay it throws passes from that how can we crack 43 and then in case you are playing against a very strong team you can pack the boss you can put six defenders how did they play when they isolated one striker how did they play when they had five defenders they would go across multiple formations to check the enemy knows how to pull down a praying church he also knows how to win against a world based church he knows to he knows how to pull down a church that is powerful very charismatic in expression he knows how to pull down the one that is not he understands the conversion factor how choir song can become entertainment he knows and he has the benefit of time when man was still pure when man was on a journey to perfection in the garden by a series of communications that God was bringing in fellowship in that pure state Adam fell are you with me in Adam's pure state fruit somebody say fruit it was not a big thing it was fruit did God say and I don't know if it happened maybe it was one question per day but the way it was written in scriptures it looked as if everything was delivered after themselves if it was delivered at the speed of our reading Adam's teacher was not this boy Adam's teacher was who? May God give you understanding. Adam was interfacing with wisdom in all of his fullness. But while on the way to perfection, the enemy still came and beguiled him. How much more you? That is another man who is on the way to perfection that is teaching you. It means your chances of survival are very slim. And the faster we begin to acknowledge that if it doesn't help us the story of the fall of every one of us will be told I know somebody may be listening to this online and be saying no I know who I am that's why you will fall I know me too I know who I am but I found out that in the New Testament a section of scripture that was not written 
because men went mad or because they were sad there are too many warnings in the new testament part of the scripture to reveal to us that our part was designed to be slippery and that a man will only be constant if he's held by god they are not strong We wrestle not against flesh and blood But against principalities The average demon that flies around doesn't, Is not a principality In this classification Of our opponents in the wrestling field A witch was not put there Because they have, they have, they are, they are, they are dimensions of darkness that salvation takes you beyond. Are you with me? Eh? There's no wizard here, no warlock here. There's no medicine man here. It means if you are saved, there are things that no longer stand a chance. And I speak because I'm a practitioner. No longer stand a chance. If you are saved. And you are conscious of what Jesus has done for you. This is not a day of sitting. Because with your with your with the consciousness of your realities in the sitting phase, you can cancel out witchcraft. We will pray. But like I was telling somebody during the week, foundationally, what give what makes a believer strong is not prayer. Pray all that you want. If Jesus has not died on your behalf, you will still be a prey. Foundate, re, redemption is the foundation for our potency. Are you with me? You find out in the first chapters of Ephesians that there was not too many communications as regards our participation. It was a compendium of in hymns and a compendium of he has. So it, it, it was putting together the many things that he had done for us. You did you did you did pray to ascend to be seated with Christ. In heavenly places far above all principalities and powers. Nobody prayed to ascend to that level. You didn't sing into that level, Motu, even though you sing well. It was it was a it was purely an act of God that just like if he formed man from the dust of the earth and put him in the garden, when he saved you, he didn't leave you where he saved you, he took you to another location. It was purely an act of God. Are you getting my point? But the Bible reveals to us that in the day that we want to stand for the kingdom, remember we are sitting far above principalities and powers. It's like we are brought lower, having been empowered. Just like Jesus was sent from heaven and he had to take upon himself the form of a man to contend for redemption. You were also saved for a day of contention. What you have gathered in the heavenlies, you will now be deployed back into the layer of principalities and powers are you getting my point you you live above them but you'll be deployed into their layer to take a stand for the kingdom because where they rule god wants that place to it's like you're in seventh floor you 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 live on the seventh floor but there's a tenant on the fourth floor who, who does wild parties and then you're empowered to descend in descending you have not lost your potency you are still conscious of all that Jesus has done for you. And your Christian work has gifted life to the things that he gave to you. So when you come to fourth floor, he's still the guy on the seventh floor. But now, what he just had as potential needs to be converted to work. And so he's brought so that he can claim fourth floor. And the Bible says that we, in that level, the shape of our warfare is what rest principalities go you won't win that's that's not what wrestling looks like many of those contentions last it's not proof that you are not powerful it's because that fourth floor was secured because a priest like you a human failed remember what jesus what satan said to jesus bible said he showed him the kingdoms of this world and all of their glories. What did he say? He said all these things were given to me. Who do you think gave it to him? You think it was God? 
No. And God did not give. Check your Bible. Maybe God said in one place that I gifted the devil something. Every territory in which Satan currently exercises dominion was ceded to him by man. So what Satan uses to secure territories is the authority of man. And he won't give it up because you shout him. He will fight. Some of those fights will last long. And their longevity is not proof that you are powerless. The problem is that, you see, the average person who has been called to contend is even lazy. I know people come and say, if I have a bad dream, I just say, it won't happen. May you meet sincere men who are not trying to be more spiritual than Jesus. Even Jesus in his temptations, when he gave the first answer to Satan, Satan didn't go away because Satan understood that when I felt the first man, it was a multi-dimensional assault that I gave because Eve was countered on three layers it was one communication but Eve failed on three layers give me the statements of Eve thank you Genesis chapter 3 I know you are strong I know your tongues are loud you have been told how to how to shoot when we are coming this morning we were doing a lecture on 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 small arms Okay, so what does the AK-47 look like? So, define it. Okay, what's the weight? Uh, which other rifle can... can? That's what we're doing. Had God said... No, no, no. I want you to... It's the response of Eve I want to see. Let's look at verse 4. Help me, help me, help me. These are just sightings. I really want... No, no. Let's go to like six or seven. You can read it now. Good. And when she saw that the tree was good for food, so saw. Saw. Sight. That's the lust of the eyes. And that it was pleasant to the eyes. And a tree to be desired to make wise. That's the pride of life. That second one is the lust of the flesh. The eye functioning like a, a part of the flesh was pleasant to it. So you have the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh. And then she, she, she relished the, con the concept of being wise. That's the pride of life. That I will be called wise Eve. She didn't think that those classes with the all wise God will produce wisdom. Ah, with God, He used to take time. He makes all things beautiful in His time. It was along these same three lines. The Satan now inverted it. He he started where he stopped because the first thing he flashed at Jesus was the lost was the pride of life if thou be the son of God do something to prove that you are the man and I'm saying that this temptation may not happen on the street it may happen in church you are communicating and you feel that people are not flowing and then you feel let me do something to clear their doubts that I did. And then you stretch your hand and three people fall. If you do that thing successfully, people will be serious. But if you have a relationship with Jesus, when you sit with him, he will clear your doubts that that thing was not recorded for you. Now what you just did is that you fell for a temptation. Now how many, you know if you don't have a serious relationship with Jesus, you can't see that thing as an arrow three people rolled on the ground and if you are a number person like me I can there are 60 people that will be touched and if I have time I used to count say I have 49 how many are remaining 11 Lord give me the balance 
of the level and they, until they count 60 or they are 61 will not stop because I am burdened that if Jesus planned for for 60 there should be none of them that is not healed none of them that is not delivered none of them that is not imparted but you can begin to take pride in that we will still clap for you you will be a great man what I came to show you is that if you continue to function like that you will have a name in the earth but your ranking in heaven will be low and in the day we are called to take a stand for the kingdom because your ranking is low you will, you will be the new model of Samson who felt that without his hair without his rank he can collide with the Philistines then they will take out his two eyes Why did I stop in my original text? Because I need to go away from it. I didn't even plan to walk it this way. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. Sometimes this, 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 this these layers of darkness, they use men. But you must be able to separate between men and those who are using them. When you play chess, for example, Somebody will say, ah, my king has chopped, chop is the word we used to use, has chopped your knight. It's not the king that chopped the knight. There's a player. Are you with me? The king on the board operates by certain movements, right? But that king is not potent if the player is not skilled. Now the Bible said to us before we got here that the one you are playing with is a master. On the draft table, you can push one to you. Say, I chop him. You push one, I chop him. You push the third one, you chop it, and then he clears your side. He knows. Satan is not afraid to lose a few battles so that he can win the war. He's not afraid. He's not afraid to make you cancel four spirits in a meeting. Go to the next one, you cancel ten. Go to the next one, you cancel fifteen. It's because he wants to ensure... That the wickedness in you, uh, it lasts, it matures to the day that God will no longer be happy with you. And then you will have the freedom to strike. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. They are not human beings. But against principalities. Against powers. Against the rulers of the darkness of this world against spiritual wickedness in high places i know that some people have taught this thing to say okay different people but the bible did not demarcate it's as though when you come into that realm what you see is what you get there's a way men are rated in the realm and as you improve in rating you you come against stronger spirits are you with me give me verse 13 wherefore it's the same admonition that he gave in verse 11 what's your name my dear John, but John you don't know why you should wear the armor you think this is your native and it's a fine native you think it's good enough so if I tell you put on the whole armor you don't know Paul had to say there's a problem and it is because of that problem that I told you wear the armor fortify yourself they don't shoot blank bullets there if you are not well bulletproofed and I learned this morning that even if somebody is wearing bulletproof if they keep shooting small arms the same point after a while it will penetrate the enemy knows the way of persistence he doesn't have too many things that he's doing it's the Christian that is busy Satan knows how to mark one person. He's not afraid of what you write on Facebook. He's not afraid of how many people follow you. It's because you have something good coming out of your life. It was the people that Jesus helped. Jesus fed. It was in front of the people that Jesus shined. The same people were the ones. I don't think they imported audience into Jerusalem. It was the same people that said, Give us the robber, kill the savior. 
give us the robber, kill the provider. Give us the robber, kill the teacher. Same people. Your robbers will say, "Where your loans are? Where are they going?" Anna, non so kwa di oguma. My Ghana friend said that should be interpreted. So, uh, um, your robbers uh, say that um, it is human beings who appreciate the crown. It is not goats that speak evil of the crown. It is still human beings. Sometimes it's the same people. As a result of the shape of your warfare, take unto you the whole armor of God that he may be able to withstand in the evil day. We already know the manifestations of the evil day. It is exposure to the wiles of the devil. And having done all to stand. Many years ago, yes, about five years ago, I was trying to give a picture of the concept of standing. And I said to us that when Roman soldiers go to war, the territory to defend is in a way divided. Many times it's just a one meter square. So everybody is standing on his own one meter. And what makes you worthy of a reward is that if we mark your one meter square as A, when the battle ends, we will check if your one meter square has not fallen into the hand of the enemy. Well, I know that in the kingdom, everybody is not given one meter square. Because in the parable of the talent, some were given one, some were given. Now, in the kingdom, if they give you one meter square, when they come back, if what you have is one meter square, you're unprofitable. The wisdom for rewards in the kingdom is that you reproduce, you maintain what you have, and then you gain equal ground. Are you with me? So if they gave me this one square, when they come, they say, you are standing here. If you stand here alone, what it means is that you are saying to the Lord, you are a bad man. You want to reap where you have not sown. This is how you must be standing. You must gain more ground. That's how this kingdom operates. But Paul says the one who wants to win must wear something. Part of what we'll discuss during this series is how to be clothed. Because we are, what has been largely advertised is what to do. It's activity. If a house starts to burn and there is a precious thing in that house, if you walk in the fire department, your eagerness to run in the, into the fire, to climb the ladder by process, is not supposed to absolve you of the responsibility of first wearing a fireproof garment. Some people have been born to. It's just that the effect of the burning will happen in five years. Some people don't know that grounds have been lost. When they now come into a season of their lives, they find out that there are certain things that are not working. And if God wants to show you mercy, He will tell you that this battle was lost five years ago. But rest or not. Ah, okay, let me not go too fast. Now, the believer in contemporary times has been schooled largely on the subject of the weapons of our warfare. And that's from Second Corinthians 10, 4 to 6. We won't go there because if I go there to be a trap, I will not come out. So, you know what? Okay, let's read. Let's just read. Let's just read. Second Corinthians 10, from verse 4. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Next verse. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God, bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Let's go. And having a readiness to avenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. We have been 
thought about what our weapons can do. If I ask you, David, what what weapons have you learned in warfare? Have you heard of any weapon? Okay, have you had any attacks in your life? Even if it's in your dream. Okay. What, what, how did you manage it? Did you call somebody? Because in modern day, one of our weapons is phony friend or phony past. Good. So, what did you use? Okay, so he used the option of phony friend. So, if you want to list weapons, please, the first one revealed tonight is phony friend. Write it to. There's capacity for phony friend in scriptures. Because when Peter was locked up, it was not he that generated the potency that secured his release. It was the prayers of the church. When Paul was free, when doors, doors, effectual doors of ministry were opened to Paul and the adversary rose, uh, it, it, what he said to the church was, pray, pray for, pray for me. So there's the concept of phony friend. So phony friend, write it. Good. What's the next one? Have you been attacked before? What did you use? You prayed. So, a phony friend also captures the reality of prayer. Because you know, there are many things that can happen in phony friend. It can be the person prays. It can be the person just says, like my father will say to me sometimes, you will prevail. That's, that's a prophetic word. So, there are many things that can be good. So, number two is prayer. How many of you have tried to use prayer to manage warfare before? Did it work? Glory to God. Three. Any other thing? Believe. Have you suffered any attack before? Okay. What did you use? Okay. You know, any other person who deployed something outside prayer? We want to populate a few weapons. Faith. Okay. Um, okay, okay, so put faith. However, faith functions because the word was deployed. So you can put the word and in the bracket, you put faith. So that's three phony friend, um, prayer, and then the word that's faith. Good. Um, let's have two more and then we run. What else? Uh, instruction, instruction, instruction. Let, let's see, put it on that word. Have you received the instruction that God just came and He just played movie for you and you went? Most of our instructions still come as utterances, right? So let's still keep it simple that way. Yes, any other person? Yes? Separation. So you can deploy a, cons- a kind of consecration that will weaken the enemy. Let me use that word, consecration. Is that you come into um, an activity or a posture that cuts you off from those who are around you. Something that is that is particular to you. So that in your separation, for example, if people came to your house to drink, you had f- five cups or six cups and there are two of you in the house. You now have five visitors they want to drink tea one of the challenges you will have is that a fight will start when your visitors are finished drinking because there will be only one cup left you have six cups five visitors and you are two in the house simply put one of the ways to secure yourself is that the last cup goes missing Abby so when your friend you, you, you don't want to touch water this morning I don't want to because you can wash a cup but you just hide a cup and then when your friend comes uh -uh, where's the sixth cup you take a note of silence he will gravitate to the kitchen wash the last cup and you will still achieve drinking tea without touching what separation that concept is consecration because what you did by separating that cup is that you separated that cup unto your use. That's consecration. That this cup, for the purpose, because I don't want to touch water, is my cup. 
Are you with me? That's consecration. So there are consecrations that can cut off the enemy. So, how many people have done that before? Good. It works. Almost all the time. Okay, so let's have one more. Fasting is also a consecration. You are separating yourself from food now. Abi. Okay. The blood, the blood. Contemporary people don't even know the blood. That's how our parents prevailed, was the blood. There are many things that have been spoken against the blood. But I will show you why we must learn the tools of our parents. That's how they survived. My mom will look at darkness. Said, I plead the blood of Jesus. There's life inside it. So the life collides with the civilization and then darkness dispersed. So the blood is good. No, I don't want it to be that white. I don't want it to be that white. Somebody says something here. Sound, sound, sound. Some of you have been having nightmares as from the devil. You don't need to pray. There are certain night spirits that don't like a sound that comes from heaven. In your search for spiritual sounds, may God help you. Some of them don't excite. It's just a quiet sound. Some of them can be loud too. But that sound will take out dark. You will sleep like a baby. Your alarms will sound. You will not hear. And it will be from war, from darkness into sound sleep. Because the sound, if it is from heaven, it will reproduce heaven's atmosphere. And whatever can no longer survive in heaven will be exited without in Jesus' name. Another tool is his name. Okay, so how many do we have now? Seven. That's 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 enough. That's enough. You didn't come. You were not born for warfare, so uh, we don't need to mention thirty. You are not the only one. Are you with me? All right. So with ease, we were able to mention the weapons because much of our education as regards warfare has been built around the consciousness of weaponry. Say pray. If you pray and God does not answer, some people say you now sing. May God give you understanding. You check scriptures and you find out that Paul and Silas did not sing because their prayer did not work. Are you with me? It was not a labor in um, in exasperation that ah, ah we have prayed since morning. There's it. Wait, wait in there again. Let's try this one. No, it was a progression. There is, there is, the, there is potency. A, a song can be made more potent when it comes out of the womb of prayer. That's what accurate ministers do. So you find out that all of them, the real ones who are heavy praying men, so they bring the sound. The sound might be a song that you know. But that song will be delivered differently because prayer birthed it. So we know our weapons. And it's awesome to be able to function by these weapons. However, there is a knowledge gap which expresses itself in the absence of the education of the shape of our warfare. And that's what our anchor scripture from Ephesians 6 10 comes to instruct us into the shape of our warfare. What do our enemies look like? What word was used to capture the process of our contention? It's not words, it's wrestling. Somebody say wrestling. I don't know if they do. Do they do rounds in wrestling? No, I think it's in boxing they do rounds. Maybe like three or four minutes. You, you, want, you who are watching, you are the one that thinks that three minutes is a short time. The guy that is being pummeled, <laughs> is, 
It's a long time. Some of them, eh, they, they, they can't punch to win. The only thing they have is the ability to soak blows. There used to be a world heavyweight boxer that if you start fighting him, no matter how he beats you, just survive. By the time you get to the sixth, seven, eighth round, the guy is tired. That's when you will win. Let your eye cut. If they do like this to you, you say you can still see. You will win. We have been called to wrestle. To contend for long. And it's against beings that are not numbered in flesh and blood. Even if you went to a wrestling school, you don't have an advantage. What they merchandise is wiles, cunning acts, trickery, all kinds of deceptions. That's how they come. They don't always throw blows. You will need to match wisdom for wisdom. Let me ask you, how much have you been made wise by engaging scriptures? Jesus was just taken from what we call the Old Testament. Man shall not live by bread alone. Worship the Lord your God alone. You know, thou shall not tempt the Lord your God. I know you don't like Old Testament. That was where our master brought out utterances to counter the, the enemy respects what you have what, what, what you think is worthless do you know more scriptures than my God will supply all my needs which is not the Bible Abby what's in the Bible all your needs I know you have personalized it is a pirated um, translation you have and you want to use that pirated that's the only verse you know maybe we should even be doing verse recitation that I'll just stretch my hand to somebody and say give me 15 verses of scripture at least if you have 15 shades of warfare you'll survive because as far as Jesus was concerned one verse is enough so if the enemy comes against you in 20 ways do you know more than Genesis 1-1 they are lost Routines, the way we used to when we were young, the competitions we used to do in church were not flipping bottles, sailor. Uh, that's not what we were doing. What we were doing was not talent hunts to see who can rap more. What we used to do was Bible drill, the speed of opening scriptures, and then in the Bible drill they now made it complex. There will be, I remember because I used to do for my Baptist association. They can say Simon the Tanner. Simon the Tanner. Open. Some books start from Genesis. They were looking for Simon the Tanner. So we had manuals that will cram. If you met me, even at conference level, start crying. I had, I had. And then they give us fresh Bibles because some of us say, eh, if you say Genesis, if you say John 3.16, we, we have overread the Bible that if I caught last last I went at John 2 um, but some people will start ah no you're out and it was not in secret so every parent saw how they had labored on their children is this boy that sometimes the gift is not serious sometimes it's two pencils one pencil one bio one ruler but some parents heart will, will cut because for one year their words get nothing That's how we used to labor. It's okay for us to stop. And if you're unfortunate that they've mentioned John 3 16, John 11 35, John 17 17, Genesis 1 1, Philippians 4 19, those were the common verses. Revelation 3 20, you'll be hanging. See, in Timothy, what is up? That's how we amused ourselves. It was exercises unto godliness. But now the things that we do to amuse ourselves cannot, cannot furnish men with Christ. 
I shared with you, there are two young girls not too far from us here. I saw them grow. I, th- I know they should be tall now. One was seven, the other one was four. And I saw them beat this seven year old, beating the four year old one evening. It was about 334. So uh, their grandma now called them, and I decided to ask her, Mama, you are not rebuking this one for beating this one. Why? Is it because she's older? She said no. They just came from school, secular school. Now it's four o'clock. They need to go to Quranic school. That their afternoon school has uniform too. So this one decided that day that she will not go. And the grandma watched the other one. That girl beat her to the school new. That's why you find out that the average Muslim is a person of the book. Even if they don't understand it, they have crammed it. We used to do memory verse when we were small. How many churches do memory verses now? Unfortunately, the people who are stewarding this this non this extracurricular kind of uh, competitions in church, they did memory verse when they were small. It means that there is a deliberate attempt to weaken the next generation, and that's why we are fighting. It's deliberate. People want to create a, a mortal and immortal kind of thing. That the man of God is high. Because if you are high, if all your members can do is phone a friend, you'll be very rich. Because money always goes in the direction of value. That a man will be, will be old enough, rich enough to marry. But if his wife has a bad dream, he will call his pastor. That's the weak shape that we are producing. That's why territories have been, have been have, you know, have, have stayed in the hand of the enemy. Because if the man is not even potent enough to be priest in his house. There's a word Paul calls this day. The days, the season of the wiles of the enemy, according to Paul, was referred to as the evil day while in the midst of those days. And men who come naked on those days. I mean all they wear is a singlet, a night nice suit and a night nice style. If they are not clad according to scriptures. Uh, <laughs> I was on Awolawa Road. You know if you are coming from Kudira Tabiola, you want to pass that LTV site. There used to be hold up there some time ago before there were plenty of street lights. Who were there in the car. A guy walked out of the bank. There's one bank there. I can't remember. Maybe it's UBA or Zenit. At that junction. I think it's Zenit. The guy wore a suit. We saw him walk out. Remove his suit. Drop it. Remove his tie. Drop it. And the guy ran mad on the road there. Two brethren now came. Come, man. So they kept the guy in the middle. They joined their hands around him. On the road, though. So my expectation was that it was, and that guy calmed down then he looked at the first one he looked at the second one point, point, and then they broke their hands and the guy took off when he left home he was a fine gentleman I hope they caught up with him darkness has no respect for what you wear in the natural if all you have is one trouser and one shirt oh put on the whole lamb of God that's the only way to survive if when the evil day comes what you drive you know policemen don't have the capacity to manage this one so if you have security in front and in the back the guy in the middle can open the door and walk naked into the market I have seen rich men become prey in the hand of darkness I have seen professors. They've read everything. They maybe they are even professors emeritus. The guy who is who is merchandising witchcraft did not go to school. He didn't even learn enough in darkness. He just inherited the spirit, and then he tweaked the spirit. Can you whisper to your neighbor? Be clothed. That's why for this series, we want to go more than weapons. Because the shape of the warfare that is coming, the weapons will not be enough. 
there are many things you see the bible is so is so complete that the man who is survived we need to yield to complete things I, i've been saying it i know people don't like it i love prayer but i'll tell you the truth i don't pray much because i love prayer it's because i found that prayer is a system of survival is my 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 dependence or my sustained activity in prayer is because i found out that i'm not too much yesterday night when we finished the meeting one brother came to me and said sir i came from so so country i, I want to take fire there me i didn't like it because papa just finished the partition service now so that's okay so i prayed blew air on him the guy went off it took long before i left because people were guarding people were guarding people were guarding people were guarding and this was what happened the first people i prayed for i just oh take life life after the fourth or fifth person and that's how it happens to me if you have a long line of praying men and you tell me to begin to pray i just need to be willing to pray for the people by the time i get to number four or five the gift of the word of knowledge we download so there were people i prayed for twice because now they were not just interested in life they wanted to know what to become of them so the thing now took long some of them didn't even just need life some of them were bound even when i put one leg in the car as I was carrying the other leg, that space of tran- of carrying leg, two sisters came. I quickly let them. Then I said, no, be going. Be-. I said, no. This anointing I'm using is not for me. My relationship with the Holy Spirit that powers me is in fellowship. This one is something upon me. So as long as there's a need, it will keep flowing. That's the way the oil on your head will not become stale everyone you use god will be under pressure to give you more are you with me so if somebody is sick be willing to pray if you now probes your heart to pray pray the more you use it are you getting me the more it works i know every time you see a sick person you say bele, bele. no no change this night use what you have that's but i've found out with me so if i travel and they say okay pray for the if I prayed for you between one and four, go to the back yeah. By the time I reach you, I'll be able to tell you ah, this thing that you are doing. So somebody came when I was in the lot and said, sir, my business is not working. Because that thing had become high. He wanted to I say, stand up. You are disobedient to God. When you obey him, he will take, he will allow your business to grow. The guy said, ah, it's true since two years ago tell your neighbor wear something if you carry a gun and you don't wear police uniform they will pick you up we have emphasized over emphasized weaponry that impure men now pray men who do not have a standing with God shouting Jesus name a name that they didn't submit to because when we come into the areas of clothing the character of the believer now begins to show the import of the death of Jesus how it was sectorized into you the helmet of salvation the breastplate of righteousness all those things are byproducts from the salvinic labors of jesus the belt of truth god's reality the sword of the spirit the shield of faith you want to have faith but you don't have a working relationship with jesus that can sponsor or trans where will you get faith from okay you just open genesis 1 1 and say in the beginning god created this is my beginning he creates you will live long some people's relationship with scripture is that it, it serves as a foundation for their pillow. They want to route dreams from the Bible. Do people still do it? Oh! 
that a small incense will rise from an unread Bible. Will come to the pillow and permit their dream life, and darkness will leave. The Bible is not a charm. Are you with me? Many charms are self operating. If you don't engage it, if you don't engage it, the book, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. Day and night, right? You meditate there. Now you will now observe to do. It means you pay attention to flow with the instructions that are written there. Then you will make your way prosperous. So if a man goes to God and says, I'm not prospering, we need to check the degree to which you engage the word. If it's a pillow, it means there's no survival. The things I'm saying are small, but I think we are focused on certain things. And so, we do those things, but we still don't have testimonies. And I've said it, I said it two years ago. If we keep praying at the rate that we are praying, and engaging sounds and chants and all of that at the rate we are doing, and there is no labor to produce a Christian by existence, many of those who are praying now will drop out of prayer. They will be offended in God. No generation sustained an anti-Christ-like existence and ended up in power. No generation. No generation transited from arrogance, from impurities, from obscenities into power. Not one generation. The enemy has no record of losing battles against impure men. Not one. They can be loud, they can be popular, they can speak in tongues in capital letters, but if Satan has something with you, he has won you. That a man will wake up and his loins will be guarded by the truth of God. That your life is a story that God is telling in heaven. That's, that's one of the ways they belt of truth. That if you take a step, it's because they took a step in heaven. God's reality. That the principles with which you are living your, you know, the belt is a binder. If your, if your shirt, your button is undone, there's not much shame. Last, last, we we'll see that your chest is hairy. Have you? You have a brother in scriptures. What's his name? Esau. So it's not a problem. Eh. But if your trouser drops, let's not even go there. Because even if you are wearing boxers, eh, the boxers may not survive the test of purity. Abby? Oh. Am I lying? Should we run a test? Can I call somebody in random? The boxers may not survive the test of purity. So the belt is a lifesaver. Oh, be grateful to God for belts. They mask a lot. So the belt is a binder. It's a system that was created to cure from shame. The belt of truth. Feet that are short with the readiness to preach the gospel of peace. And then you have a shield of faith with which you will quench the fiery darts of the enemy. And in a day of offense, you will need to cut with the sword. The average believer is not clothed. How many of you can pray for one hour praying scriptures? Because one day you will go to a church where they don't allow you to pray in tongues, even as a minister. And you must still bring God's reality, even though there's no provision to pray in tongues. Can you can you ascend praying in English? Or Yoruba? Biriazinu. Yes, you have to. All of us need to be able to pray scriptures that you have stayed in the world long enough to be able to ascend from the word of God. I have ministered in churches that that was the first time. Don't do it. Don't do it. I've shared with you my story. It was now an impartation service. 
and you think the cheat code in impartations say if you do that thing we will come and collect microphone and drive you out if you meet Jesus that way we will call you an unprofitable servant because the multiplicity of weaponry is designed to be an advantage that if one is cut off you can bring out another one you have become a master of only one kind of prayer I've shared here how many of you can pray silently for one hour your lips not moving your thoughts not strained there is the help of the spirit that disciplines the soul that even when the mouth is not moving the heart is praying you need to begin to practice it on your bed you will have more peace you will find out that your enemy is not your neighbor it's because you, you, when he wants to sleep you want to pray I don't mean you're on your bed at no you are still disturbing him and for me that sound is worse than ha 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 kilo 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 what if darkness comes in a place where you can't talk so you must rehearse unfortunately the battle has started and that's why Jesus is bringing us this audience when I've not even entered my teaching at all where did I stop ah. so the first the knowledge gap is expressed by the absence of education of the nature of our warfare two the design of the armor that's what I just spoke about three is the ratings of the warrior and that's where I want to stand I love the word of faith. I love it. And the word of faith has been a great blessing. But like every other movement that has been gifted to us by Jesus, every movement that came has been guilty of overemphasis. Why I'm staying with the word of faith is because many of us came around that time. Are you with me? Yes. Some people have taken it to extremes that believers think that they can survive just by a set of confessions. If you say it long enough, you will get it. Some people read Norman Vincent Pearl's um, The Power of Positive Thinking so that you are the last in your class, but every day you wake up, say, I'm a prof, I'm a prof, I'm a prof, I'm, I'm a prof. I said, I'm a prof. I am a prof. I said, I am a prof. So if you say it long enough, you will become it. No. Paul said that our confessions begin from inward conviction. There is a spirit that God gives that produces utterances. It's called the spirit of faith. And Paul was careful to say that the one that was given to them is the one that was given to those that came before them. It's the same spirit of faith. And what was written was that because they believed to believe is that in the spirit you have handled the reality. To believe actually means that you have been able to peep into God's realm. And because what God wants to do in the earth has been done in his realm, you come to the layer where you are not just expecting it to come, where you already apprehend it as done. That's belief. So that if I say, my shoe has come, you don't need to see the shoe. It's because in God, I've seen that the matters of the shoe have entered past tense. Are you with me? I saw one white shoe. Oh, and I don't like white shoes, but I saw one white shoe and somebody wore white shoe and I just ah. so I closed my eyes. Say white shoe. White shoe. It's not bad. The following morning. We finished one of the sessions. Somebody now brought white shoe to me. No worry, I'll soon wear the white shoe. The way I'm thinking it is odd, but I shall wear it. So the person now brought the white shoe. And now I asked the person, When did you just come today? A minister. He said, No, that was on the shoe was delivered on Thursday. He said it was on Tuesday. That this white shoe might enter this heart. I said, Bye forever to him. 
it was me that arrived late not in the meeting room in the reality of the white room God needed to motivate me for reception by allowing Papa to wear white shoe. And when I saw it on his leg, if I was conventional, you would have known. You would have spent all your money to be buying things for me. At least I can go to YouTube to watch how ministers collect from their members. It's it's not it's not hidden. This is the trickery is all there. By the time I watch like ten sermons, I'm quite intelligent. I will have sifted found a way of collecting from you in a way that you will have given it before you come to the realization that you gave something and anyway it's a good time to appreciate everyone that celebrated my wife it's a good time thank you for the gifts the lord bless you in the name of jesus okay i think next year i will take her for ice because ice you always falls in the week of her birthday and i'm tired of not seeing my wife on her birthday what do you think? Okay. So, the ratings of the warrior. Are you as strong as you presume? Maybe you have also talked yourself to a point that you are not confident that you can stand what is coming. Are there metric systems that you have applied to give to yourself some kind of ranking that God knows that you do not possess and that darkness knows that you do not possess? Maybe you are the only one that thinks that you are strong. Because a day came in Israel when Israel was at war. David had a, a bank of medals from the battles that he had fought he was not just a master fighter he was a master tutor and he was he was you see david's men were like militants the average militant cannot die in a gun battle he only dies because he has broken the code and if you look at david's men they operated by a code a code that made them that made them show up as consecrated as a priest even though they were fighters they could eat shoe bread unto no negative consequence are you getting me so they didn't record too many deaths look at them they fought too many battles but many of them died natural deaths and those who were killed were not killed by the enemy they were killed by their brethren Uriah was not a weak man no. it was that man who had measured his capacity took him to a plane that was greater than him and the bible said they would do if they stayed he would go back and come back to meet Bathsheba pregnant for for David men like Joab men like Abishai men like Abner and then you come to those three mighty men men like Shamgar strong men many battles no scars so David probably was basking in the consciousness of being a king warrior and the ability to have trained accurate men that he could rest. Unknowing to him, there was a greater warfare that he was to meet being at home. Because the battle on the field had only effect on one generation. The enemy that invaded him on the roof had the capacity to invade him in transgenerational dimensions. Because of that one act, a sword hung on his lineage permanently. If you had met David to say, Oh, king, you didn't go to war, what would David have told you? My guys can, it's not this kind, my, my guys can handle this one. But there was a shade of warfare that even he could not handle, and he was oblivious to the nature of his warfare. He thought it was going to be brute force. You know till Jesus comes Even if you have all the money in the world You still have needs As in you will use your money to meet needs You will still see a car Say I need this car You have money to buy it but it's still meeting a need As long as you have a need You are vulnerable Okay you are not married now you are. 
you are okay, you are okay, say, Jesus has helped me. One day you marry. And there are benefits that come with marriage. When they when you are unlocked, a male or a female, we will know if you rate very high. Because once once that appetite is fed, then the enemy can exploit it. There was one commodity that Theo brought for us during this thing. Crickets. Have you eaten cricket before? My God. Oh, oh. Don't do your face like that. Man. The cricket from head to toe is all protein. It's all protein. And it's safer than red meat. Well roasted. I did not begin to crave for cricket until I ate three. There's one place between Akwanga and Lafia where they used to sell roasted goat meat. Everybody knows the place. You must. It's like you must clock in and then go. But until we got to Lafia, we didn't move too fast. Because some of the occupants in the vehicle were longing for goat meat at 6 a.m. Say, sir, are we there? Say, they have realized this road that I can't locate it again until we locate it. They have not even started frying it. So one of us now said, Ah, okay, it's not ready. How long? I said, See, my own flight is 12. <laughs> me, I can't be waiting for a meeting. I can't come late and tell my wife that it was meat that kept me. For long, do you have cravings for good meat? If you eat that meat, one, you have cravings. I don't. I'm serious. When the meat is done, Pastor Diola, I don't know the number of goats they kill there, but they don't go to bed with one piece. It's as though there's there's a dragnet. Cars just park. You can see people buy 50k, 100k goat meat. I think it's now 500 naira per piece. You must eat it. It's not chance. It's just that it's good. I know. There's a way I used to test if I'm being charmed. If I eat here, eat here. One day, I'll be hungry and I'll decide I will not eat here. I'll eat in another place. If I find myself in that place, it means I need deliverance. So I always go to this Baba. Today, I will not bab here. It's just to be sure that you are not charming me. But those two things, if you eat them. I also saw one kunu. Thank God I didn't fellowship with it. Because if you drink that kunu, if you drank at 3 o'clock, you will not be awake now. No. It, it comes with a sedating everybody that drank it slept you sleep you sleep well and sleep long you can just imagine it this is what I'm saying you can just imagine it when you taste it once you begin to have cravings therefore it will be premature to measure your strength me and Pastor Ras were talking this morning about corruption financially Ras now looked at me. He said, Sir, how much can they give you that you betray Jesus? And I was quite forlorn because I was trying to back test. My conclusion was, God, the help that made me say no to a few millions will help me in the billions. I don't want to. You are not strong. One of the killers. In seasons of warfare, is that the average believer abandons the the gates of help and begins to pride in what they have become. That's why the word of our confidence was created. You are not confident in the God who answers prayers, you are confident in your prayer capacity. You know there's a sound you can chant, and the witches will go to sleep. It's the ones that you know. 
when that demoniac came when Jesus was on the mount of transfiguration why did the disciples try the testimony was that your disciples tried but they could not why do you think they tried they had mastered some demons if you have not mastered you will not attempt so Jesus had to say oh okay you are struggling with this one this kind if you grow long enough you will meet a kind that you have not mastered when we, we sit as brothers we share about women so come in the day they send one from hell may you find help brothers you are not strong <laughs> ah, the enemy knows your frame and one of the ways they search your frame is that there are, there are search engines in the spirit that are stronger than google it's stronger than that chat gpt they will go back down your lineage and find the last prayer man and they will find the jerry of woman that brought him down they will configure the one that they will send to you after the order of that strange one complexion body features that when you see you will you will go the way of your forefather same with ladies because i used to i used to think that only men had eyes issues now ladies have a few times you have vocalized the the anointing plus plus six pack and an athletic body and height of Hussein Bolt and all of those things, you have pictured it in your heart. Oh! But the enemy can work on a long term project. He can labor his sons in a gym to produce what you cannot resist. That's why your strength should not be sourced from a weapon you have mastered. Be strong the Lord maybe next year I will come to brothers meet next year it's so easy to be distracted sorry I'm being petty it's so easy to be distracted it's because I know the shape of this warfare it's not hard to walk away from your consecrations you may be thinking you are strong now because you have not found your jerry. Your jerry. Jacob did not know that everybody they married in their house was fair. And fair is not light skinned in scriptures. It's a combination of a set of beauty compliments. That when Abraham married Sarah, Sarah was fair. When Abraham married Sarah, they installed the software of that kind of woman into their lineage. So, when Sarah died, when they got a wife for Isaac, what did the Bible say happened to Isaac? He was comforted. When he saw his wife, he saw his mother. It was the same shape of mother. Fair. They went to the same land. The people of that land were attracted to the same kind of person. It means there's something down in the lands that they visited too that configured all the men to desire one kind of woman a king can be married but if he sees fair he will not be careful that it's another man's wife he will take it oh Jacob 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 was privileged to marry in light and in darkness he programmed to marry one of two sisters who was fair the father now said okay no you walk you walk you walk for seven years a man became a slave just to stay with the kind of woman of his family. Somebody said seven years. He now finished working. They now planned for him that oh, you can't give the younger before the older. So when they brought the woman in the night, they brought Leah. Leah was cross-eyed. That's how the Bible described her. So they covered her. The guy was so raptured in. I shot seven years work, slept with the wrong woman, woke up in the morning, saw that he was deceived. Why did you do this thing to me? Because we cannot. Now they didn't give him a price. Just because he wanted that kind of woman. Say, don't worry. I give you another seven years. So come, don't you think you should have negotiated that term? Ah. Okay, let's do one year. Why did he go under seven years? He was obsessed. Because now the issue was, you won't need to wait. 
He married that woman on higher purchase. Abi, say, just give her to me now. I, I'll give you another seven years. So he was willing to go on a 14 year journey for a kind of woman. I want to pray again for brothers. When hell decides to come for you, may you be delivered from that one that you cannot resist. Jibola, have you found out that there are ladies that pass that you look at many times? There are ladies that pass that you pass. Everybody's fine, Abby. God will help your heart. I've said plenty of things. And that word fine is a relative word. You are wondering why some people married some people. They are slaves of an ancestry. We are in dark days. And I bring you witness that the enemy currently is priding himself in wasting giants. Oh, oh. That song is already being rendered in Gath, in, in Philistia. The daughters of the Philistines are already rejoicing. My cry is that when they populate the role, my name will not be there. But I can assure you, I can assure you, right now as I'm speaking, it's possible that a giant is wasting somewhere. My mom used to pray in Yoruba. When you lua, iye a wante ba pama lo boni no ewu. When they populate the numbers of those who escaped evil, all of them fall into the company of the ones that you preserved. The battle is raging. We are still all speaking scriptures, but hearts are being drawn away. People are breaking boundaries of consecration. People are breaking boundaries of separation. How will you survive? One of the things God will do in the next few minutes is to reveal to you from Jesus' posture what your true ranking is. He will show us how a man becomes great in the kingdom. Let's go to scriptures. I'll run faster from here. Sorry, I have notes. See, see, I have notes. So it's not like I don't have notes, but I have buttons. I have buttons. Where do I start from? Uh,